I like in elementary, I was bullied a lot. One day, this girl could call her Jenny. Jenny was having a birthday party. So obviously I wasn't invited, so I basically begged for an invitation. And I remember Jenny was like, okay, if you're like my servant for like a week, like I'll give you an invitation. Long story short, I was a servant for a week and she gave me an invitation to her party. This is the best part. It's the best part. <laughs> So finally, party day came. My mom was driving me to the party. We were going to the address that the girl gave me. So we finally get to the house. The house was looking dead, like it didn't have balloons, nothing. So I was like, maybe maybe they're just not done decorating. So I go and knock the door. And you know who answers the door? You're never gonna guess who. My fucking teacher. It was my teacher's house. Jenny gave me the address of my teacher and all her fucking birthday party. I just wanna- I was gonna get kidnapped yesterday. Story time. So I got off work at 6. And at this time, it's already dark as hell outside because I miss daylight savings. And God knows I'm afraid of the dark, so I ran my ass to the car, locked the doors, and drove off. As I was driving, I heard this weird noise. I thought it was my heater, so I was sitting in the car like, What the hell is this? God, you're really telling me I gotta spend money on a new heater? Mm -mm. So I turned off my heater, and turns out it wasn't my heater. And I was just sitting there like, What the hell is that noise? So I'm looking around, and I see this note underneath my windshield. Right as I see this note, I also see this car tail tailgating me this car was so close i thought it was a cop then i start freaking out because i think this car's following me and on top of that my friend had just told me about this new sex trafficking thing where they leave a note on your car and you pick up the note to read it that's when they steal you well in my head that's what i thought was going on and i just sat in my car driving and crying like i don't want to get stolen so i tried to call my boyfriend and of course the call doesn't go through so then i switched lanes to see if they were following me and sure enough they switched lanes too so then i decided to pull into this gas station and they pulled into it too turns out the guy was actually trying to get gas and the note was for tamales <laughs> She tries to switch all the lights back on, but they're not working anymore. And all of a sudden, she's finding it really hard to breathe. She's afraid she might faint, so she kneels down onto the floor. Then suddenly, she feels sharp nails running down her back. And she tries to move, but she feels so weak that she can't. She turns around to see who it is, but before she can, she blacks out. The next thing she remembers is waking up in a hospital bed, and her mom is sitting next to her looking really worried. Her mom's like, everything's okay, there was a carbon monoxide leak in the apartment, and you passed out. The nurse is like, in the next few weeks, you may feel tired or sluggish or have have hallucinations don't worry that's totally normal and my friend is like what about the back scratches her mom's like what are you talking about so she runs to the bathroom pulls up her hospital gown and there are four dark scratches on her back when she comes back from the bathroom her mom looks concerned and she goes honey there's also something else you should know dave who lived on the first floor passed away and they've been cleaning out his apartment and they found something and it might freak you out but i feel like If you're ever driving late at night, don't do what they did. One night, a boy and his friend were on their way to a school dance when they saw a girl on the side of the road looking lost. They stopped the car and asked if she needed a ride, and she asked him to take her home. They said that they were going to a school dance and asked if she wanted to come too. She agreed. But these boys wouldn't know yet that this girl was not an average hitchhiker. So they all got in the car, and the girl sat in the back seat. After a while, the girl would constantly say that she was cold, so one of the boys gave her his jacket. They got to the dance, and things were pretty normal. But what happened after would make the boys question reality. When the night was almost over, it was finally time to take the girl home. When they almost arrived, the girl told them where she lived, but told them to drop her off close by so she can walk the rest of the way. So that's what they did. But after the girl walked away, the boy who let her borrow his jacket realized that he never asked for his jacket back. His friend said that they could just come back tomorrow for it. The next morning, they came back expecting to get the jacket and leave, but things were not so simple. They came up to the girl's house and knocked on the door, but they were shocked at what they discovered as soon as the door opened. Story time about how I catfished all the popular boys in my grade and they found out about it. So a little background information. I was at a new school. I just started there probably like four months before this happened. And I was best friends with this one girl. We're going to call her Kate. And Kate had a crush on this guy. We're going to call him Alex. And he liked her back, but she wanted to see if he was loyal. Well, at least that's what it was supposed to be at first. But then he started to actually fall in love with this bitch. So then I started feeling bad and I told my friend that I just wanted to end it right there. And she was like, no, let's keep going. This is so funny. Mind you, this was the boy that she liked. So at that point, I was like, whatever. And then he asked to meet up at the mall. So then we took him on a whole goose chase around the whole mall. Like we were like, oh, we're in this store. Never mind, we're in this one. And the only reason why we got away with it was because he thought he saw us in the one store. So then we broke up with him and we started talking to all the other popular boys. And on this fake account, we said that we went to a different school. Well, one of the kids at that school said that he never saw us there, like for part two. Part two about how I catfished all the popular boys in my school and they found out about it. So like I said, the one kid said, oh, I never saw you at my school. So then I just blocked him and thankfully that situation got left alone. 
Well, then after that, like I said, we started talking to all the other popular boys. We're going to call this Catfish Ashley. Well, at that point, everybody knew who Ashley was. Like, I would literally be sitting in class and all the girls would be talking about how much they hate Ashley, how Ashley's such a hoe. Like, all the girls despised her. Sorry, her. And they kind of had a reason to. Because we broke up so many relationships and everything. Well, the one night I'm having a sleepover with my friends. Well, Kate asked if she could come to the sleepover as if it wasn't obvious that she could come. Just a quick reminder, Kate was the one who I started the account with. So I was joking around with her and I was like, no, you can't come. So I wake up the next morning, right? And all the popular boys are blowing up my phone on my actual accounts like for part three. Part three about how I catfished all the popular boys in my school and they found out. So like I said, I wake up the next morning and thankfully it was a Sunday. And like I said, I woke up to text messages from all of Alex's friend group. And all these text messages were like, are you the one running the Ashley account? We saw screenshots of all the messages between you and Kate. So I texted Kate and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, how does everybody know? And she made some bullshit ass excuse saying that her brother took her phone and took pictures of all the conversations and sent them to everybody. Which obviously I knew that wasn't true. But after that I went into a whole depression because everybody just kept coming at me for this fake account. Whatever, it was literally me and her who created it. She was the one who wanted to make it to fucking catfish this guy that she liked. So I wasn't going to school for a few days and my guidance counselor literally had to come to my house. Pretty much drag me out of the fucking house and bring me to school. So I sat in the guidance counselor's office all day and then I had to move schools. One time, I was behind the register at Victoria's Secret. This customer walks in and immediately everybody spots her as a red flag. She's just picking up items, throwing them in her bag, not looking at sizes, not looking at colors. So everybody's like, mm. everyone's on their walkie like. Watch this customer. She's coming to the fitting room. She's headed to the cash shop. Somebody get her. Check her ID. Get her. Get her. She has a bag full of stuff. And guess who gets her at the register? Me. So she comes to my register and she dumps out her stuff and you know we're having a regular conversation. Hi, how are you? Yada yada yada. Her total comes up to probably between $700 to $900. It was expensive. My manager is at the register next to me talking to me on the walkie. Ashley, make sure you get that ID. Don't matter what she's using, make sure you get that ID. So I ask her for the ID because she's paying credit. Why do you need to ask for my ID? Just take it. Run it. I'm like, no, ma'am, I'm sorry. I need your ID for the purchase. She starts to raise her voice at me. So like about a week ago, this random user started tagging me and they were saying that I want a giveaway or something. And my dumbass, you know, always being a dumbass, I stalked their account and I accidentally clicked on a link on their profile. <laughs> Obviously left the link very fast because I did not want a virus on my phone, but I ended up getting something way worse. <laughs> so after I left the link, I started getting really weird text messages that were saying, I know everything about you. This is your address. This is your age and whatever. Along with that, they kept calling like at 3 30 in the morning every day sound like blocked to them because that was very freaky so after i blocked this number i realized that someone was constantly throwing random objects in my yard like band-aids and like safety kits i was very confused i didn't know if it was my friends pranking me or if it was this number that knew all of my information now <laughs> this is the best part <laughs> long story short my friends said it wasn't them so I ended up unblocking the number that knows all of my information and asking them stuff hi i'm gonna post more soon but if you have any stories that you would like, I will be more than happy to do them. Just DM me and tell me if you want the names to be enormous or not. Thank you. Have a great day. My boyfriend showed up to my house randomly one day. I had just woken up and I got ready so fast in my room. Mom told him that he could wait in the living room. She ended up jumping in the shower. I went outside to the living room and we ended up going to his house. And I was there. My mom called me. 
She said that there was $350 on the table and that $150 bill was missing. I couldn't believe what I was hearing, but I had to find out the truth. So I told him to take me to Jack in the Box. We went through the drive-thru. I was so mad, but I had to keep it together. He knew that he only paid with 20. He never paid with 50. I ordered my food and I was waiting to see what bill he pulls out. And guess what, guys? It was a $50 bill. Then I looked at him and told him, don't pay with my mom's money. I grabbed my purse, pulled out a 20, and told him, pay with my money. His eyes just popped open. He knew he got caught. This is why I always lock my doors at night. There was once a boy who got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. While in the bathroom, he hears loud noise and wanted to go investigate. But then he started hearing what sounded like large objects being dragged across the hallway. Now feeling scared, he runs into the bedroom and hides under his sheets, hoping whoever it was would just ignore a sleeping child. The door creaks open, and a man with no eyes and no clothing is dragging his parents' bloodied bodies into the room. This man props up the boy's father against the edge of the bed so he would be facing the boy, and puts the mother in a chair also turned towards the boy. It was as if the intruder wanted the boy to see the parents' bodies, but the boy just pretended he was asleep, trying as hard as is possible not to think. Hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. It does help support us, and let's know what videos you guys want to see.